So if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen the transformation from my HP Pavilion 570 and taking all those components and putting it in this Cooler Master NR200, then definitely go back and watch those videos. And since you're new to the channel, definitely get subscribed. But what we have in here is an i5-7400 from the HP Pavilion, and we also threw in a GTX 1660 Super. And that combination is honestly pretty good in most games, but the i5-7400 can sometimes be a bottleneck for sure. It's the lower clocked i5 in the Intel 7th Gen uh, processors. So what I went ahead and did was try to upgrade that CPU to an i7-7700, which is the max CPU that the HP motherboard can allow. But trying to get the hold of an i7-7700 will run you most likely between $200 and $250 on eBay. They are extremely hard to come by on the secondary market for a reasonable price, maybe $150 if that. So I started to think a little bit outside of the box to figure out how I could possibly get my hands on one of those i7s without spending a astronomical amount of money. So what I came up with was buying a another PC with an i7-7700 already in it. So what that allows me to do is get an i7-7700 PC for $265 in this Lenovo Think Center and swap the CPUs. So put the i5-7400 in the Lenovo and then put the 7700 inside of our NR200. And at the end of the day, go ahead and sell the Lenovo back with the i5 in it rather than the i7, which should allow me to recoup the majority of that $265, maybe if I can sell this for anywhere between $175 and $200, even $150 to $200, then that CPU costs me way less than what it would cost me if I were to buy the 7700 alone. So let's jump into this video. What we're going to do is pull out the 7700 from the Lenovo. I'll get it installed in our NR200, get the PC put back together, and then we can do some testing to see exactly how much performance increase we get with the 7700 compared to the 7400. So I've got the Lenovo torn down and the i7-7700 ready to come out of here. So all we're gonna have to do is pull the 7700 out of the Lenovo and then come over to our NR200. I'm gonna pull off the heatsink from our i5, pull that out and we're just gonna swap the CPUs as simple as that. Of course, new thermal paste and everything like that as well, but I'm gonna quickly go through that process and then I'll catch you guys when it's all done. So we're first gonna take a look at Cinebench and inside of Cinebench, we're seeing almost double the performance with the 7700 versus the i5-7400. Of course, with hyper-threading, we do have technically double the logical processing cores. So that's why we're seeing almost double the improvement going to that four core eight thread 7700. So that is some really good performance increases from the CPU itself. But now let's jump into some games and inside of games, we're seeing, again, amazing performance increases in both Valorant as well as Fortnite. We are seeing some dips below the 144 FPS mark on the 7700, but we're seeing way lower CPU usage, going from almost 100% on the 7400 to around 50% on the 7700. So that is keeping temps down. It's keeping the overall system running a lot, lot cooler. And with these super impressive FPS bumps in both games, I'm super glad that I switched over to the 7700 inside of this build. It showed, as you guys saw in the video, a tremendous increase both in gaming performance as well as just overall CPU intensive tasks. So this should be perfect when we use this thing as a media center PC for streaming, gaming, all of that. This should easily be able to handle it now. Jumping up with the hyper threading, with the extra uh, CPU speed, it should just it should blow the i5-7400 out of the water when it comes to pretty much all those tasks. So I am super excited about that. But it doesn't just stop with 7th gen. Everything from 7th gen down to pretty much 2nd gen, you're able to see this performance increase jumping up from a core i5 to a core i7. They're pretty much all, for the most part, going from 4 cores and 4 threads to 4 cores and 8 threads, whether you're going to the 3770, 4770, or 4790, or the 6700 you're going to see similar performance increases jumping from an i5 to an i7. And of course, the baseline is going to be slightly less as you keep getting older and older in terms of the generation, but you're still going to see some really nice jumps with the increase in logical processing count 
as well as core speed going from an i5 to an i7. So what do you guys think? Was this a good move? Was it good to upgrade to the i7 from the i5? And the way I did it, trying to keep costs down, buying a full PC with the CPU in it so I could swap the PCs and sell the PC back with the i5. Let me know your comments. Let me know your thoughts. Put all that in the comments below. If you liked the video, if you learned something, if you got some good ideas, definitely give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you can stay up to date on all my PC builds and upgrade videos, as well as all the other tech content. So I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you.